How about this? Some of the fish and the fauna that you would expect to see beneath the ocean waves. Oceans cover 70% of the planet's surface. And you know, there is so much down there we know almost nothing about. But what scientists do know is that the oceans are in real trouble. There is a body, it's called the Intergovernmental Oceanographic Commission. It's a UN body whose job it is to pull from governments all around the world information, expertise, research, and work with that to take action to mitigate some of the damage caused to the oceans. This is the UN's first ocean conference, and it's trying to tackle some of these critical issues. Eric, you wanted to come in there. If you could take that mic. I think uh, the answers to, the, to this question is very simple. I mean, do we need more science? Yes, for sure. Do we have enough science to act? Again, yes, for sure. I mean, we have more than enough science to act on plastic. We have more than enough science to act on climate. For sure, we need more, better, and more precise, and should encourage that. But we should also, there's also time now for politicians and world leaders to stand up and defend science. If we believe, which all of us do, does, that NASA can take us to the moon, probably also to Mars, how can some politicians say, that, oh, we believe in that, but when NASA do climate science, then we decide not to believe in that. How can we accept such a view? We need to hit back and defend science. We have enough science to believe in climate change. We have enough science to know that there is a problem with the health of the ocean. But we need more science and better science in order to understand uh, the impact of the measures that we're taking. Scientists need to be questioning us, the leaders, and we need to ask uh, the critical questions back, asking for more, uh, and asking for more knowledge. But we can never ever replace politics by science. As a politician, sometimes you need to act and take decisions, even if you don't have all the facts. Because you know it's time to act. And um, on the oceans, we are at that point where we have to act and focus uh, on that. Craig McLean is, uh, is with us, uh, Assistant Administrator for Oceanic and Atmospheric Research at NOAA. And Craig, thanks for being with us. I, it, I think it would just be a bit naughty of me not to mention um, a sort of elephant in this room, and that is uh, America's current commitment to intergovernmental efforts to uh, deal with some of the issues which obviously affect the oceans. And I, I, I know it's an unfair question in a way for you, but that must play on you, on your hopes and, and fears about what you can do, what the United States can do at, at a critical time. Well, I, I certainly appreciate the question. I think our commitment to monitoring the oceans and to be helping with other nations in leading this effort, we're, we're anxious to recruit other nations and we see them coming. And I think that it's an organization like the Intergovernmental Oceanographic Commission, which provides the footing, the foundation, the, the notion that 148 nations can be in one place led by scientists and government officials to not just ponder the, the what-ifs of science, but to ponder and, and scheme and plan and, and draw the architecture of how we will fund a, a multinational global undertaking of ocean science. Yeah, I wonder, Peter Thompson, if I could just come to you on that point, whether in a way the slap in the face, as many people might see it, is also quite a strong wake-up call about the importance, the critical element of that intergovernmental balance that if every country isn't involved pretty much then you know when when we have a, a moment like this uh, it, it can be cataclysmic if everyone else is not involved it's got to be led by everybody effectively you know the good news is that uh, everybody is in sdg 14 all 193 uh, governments uh, agreed to sdg 14 in fact it's the only universal thing that we have in human history on the ocean uh, where, where everybody's come together. If countries are doing their own thing and making it work, why then this call for in greater investment in intergovernmental 
efforts and the sort of area that you would like to put time and effort into when that's not always, country by country, the most popular route? We have to mobilize all the necessary science in order to study the ocean. I remember when uh, Sylvia Earle, the uh, famous uh, marine biologist, said that the biggest danger and harm to the ocean and to ourselves is ignorance. And we don't know it. We just don't know it. We know that only a very small percentage of the ocean has been studied. We know that the uh, sea floor has not been studied, only 5%. And, uh, and we know that there might be 1 million species there that have not been discovered as yet. Uh, so on one side, we have to massively invest in, in the science about the oceans. Uh, we have to um, massively, I would say, uh, call and invest into the, uh, this uh, um, science policy interface. I think it's very important uh, uh, in order to have informed decisions. And the answer to your initial question whether we need science or action, I think it's uh, quite obvious. We need more and better based, scientifically based action. Uh, so this is where we are trying to mobilize governments and that is why we want to have a United Nations international decade about ocean science. Uh, I think this is extremely important uh, to invest if you want to get the right answers. Serene Highness Prince Albert II of Monaco is joining us now uh, for um, a few minutes at least. Uh, Your Highness, please come up here. I'll uh, you have my seat because uh, <laughs> you're not getting away without a couple of questions if that's all right. I'd like to throw to you first. Irina was talking about a decade of, of ocean science and the importance of that as a time frame. Uh, is that enough? A decade even? I mean, what sort of time scale should we be looking at to make these things really work? Well, David, first of all, thank you very much for inviting me here and, and uh, my greetings to everybody. And this is a wonderful opportunity, I think, to celebrate all together this, uh, this great uh, decade that's being announced of, of research and uh, this uh, first this first global ocean science report that I think everybody is is uh, is waiting for and has been long anticipated. I think a decade is a is a perfect time frame. I don't know if it's enough, but but at least it's it's better than uh, different uh, research projects that, that that only go for two, three, or four years. It's very rare on very rare occasions five, but but to have a a, a decade to look at at an issue as vast and as complex as as, uh, as oceans, uh, I think will 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 give us a better understanding. Um, Thomas, I'll bring you in on this actually because obviously you're doing a lot of work with regard to campaigning against the plastics issue. It is, from a media perspective, it is the single most visual, um, horrible word, but appealing problem in a sense within the oceans. How? Where does it stand on the priority list of importance, do you think? You're absolutely right uh, that uh, this is something that people really get, that climate change is having a huge impact on the oceans, but it's very difficult to translate that into people's lifestyles at home. But they can see plastic of everyday items that is being carelessly disposed and ending up in the oceans uh, and is harming wildlife and is in our food chain. It is coming back to haunt us. Peter, you're, you're talking about the importance of, yes, science is great, but action's got to come and it's got to come fast. Uh, I just wonder, do, do you push hard on the private sector in terms of their role, their sense of responsibility even? It's like climate change. Uh, ocean uh, action is the same. We can't do it as a bunch of UN organizations or, or a whole bunch of governments. Everybody is in this together, every individual. And of course, what, what do individuals relate to? They relate more to private sector in their daily lives than they relate to government. Private sector has a huge role to play in this, and we as individual consumers also are totally complicit in this. And uh, don't just look to governments and UN organizations to fix things. It's up to all of us to do so. sculpture, which is a whale's tail, is made up of plastic. It's debris from the oceans, of course, so it perfectly illustrates the discussions that have been going on in this conference. No one's in any doubt that there is a need for more action to deal with the problems, but also more science to better understand how those problems can be resolved. One thing above all, though, anyone in there will tell you, do we really want to be asking the same questions in 10 years' time 
rather than providing answers.